Hello again. The last time I spoke to Jeremy Stretch, he gave us a tour de force of the currency market. And I'm delighted to say I've been back on the trading floor of CIBC to speak to him once again. I always like to talk about the Canadian dollar to start with when I come here. It recently hit a three month low against the US dollar. So it seems the fiscal cliff problems are really starting to weigh on the loony. Uh, it is very much the case that we're seeing the risk environment deteriorating and that has uh, impacted on the Canadian dollar, as well as some degree of uh, 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 weakening in the domestic data as well. So we are seeing uh, a slight uh, deterioration in the underlying valuation of the Canadian dollar. It does look as though we're going to be testing back to the sort of levels that we're seeing at the beginning of August. But I think there's one interesting dynamic uh, that at play here, that if we were to see a rise in the Middle Eastern tensions, uh, then that may well uh, provide a little bit of uh, respite for Canadian dollar selling through the correlation with the oil price. And what about the Aussie dollar? Because I, I was reading the, the monthly report which you publish, and you're saying in terms of fundamentals, it's, it's pretty much overvalued, but it still holds up relatively well, especially compared to Canadian dollar. It has been holding up surprisingly well. And of course, it does have still a, a fairly significant yield advantage, and I think that has been uh, one of the key defining factors. And uh, that the, the RBA didn't cut rates at the beginning of this month, I think, was relatively significant. Uh, but I think there are some uh, underlying dynamics which continue to weigh on Australian dollar performance. I think still there is a risk of further rate cuts to come. Uh, I think that will weigh on the, the external value. And I think also the deceleration in terms of uh, the China growth story, I think, will, will gradually weigh on the Australian dollar. And we will see the, uh, the overhang of speculative positions start to re be reduced. Uh, we will see relative uh, Canadian dollar outperformance. So previously we would say that if the commodity currencies are coming under pressure, then we'd expect to see uh, currencies like the Japanese yen and Swiss franc start to strengthen. But that's not really the case. Dollar uh, dollar yen rather is above 80 at the moment and seems pretty comfortable there. Well, it's not only above 80, but it's it's rallied above 81, and it's really uh, a function of the, the market's interpretation of what the change of government will actually bring forth uh, in Japan as we get to an election next month. We've seen some very clear calls from the leader of the opposition uh, LDP party, Mr. Abe, about unlimited intervention or un unlimited liquidity, should I say, from the Bank of Japan, and that's really leading the market to say, well. The Bank of Japan has lacked in terms of its firepower or surprise in terms of market action. Now we're seeing greater uh, assumptions that we will see a much more dynamic Japanese policy to try and weaken the enemies, the deflationary problem. Uh, do you expect that 120 floor for the Swiss franc to get challenged a bit more? As you said, there's many uh, potential risks out there at the moment. There are indeed a number of risks out there. And what we have seen is that uh, the Swiss franc against the euro is trading below its 200-day moving average, and it has been for a little while now. And so we're in relative close proximity to that 120 threshold again. Will it break? I don't think it will at this particular point. Clearly, there is a massive degree of vested interest in Switzerland to make sure that the credibility of the Swiss National Bank is not broken. So I think it is going to be the case, though, that the SMB are going to have to be more active in the market as we continue to uh, trade uh, in relatively close proximity to that 120 threshold. And what about the pound? Mervyn King was pretty gloomy this week. We, we all knew that the last set of GDP stats weren't the start of a new trend, but where does the pound stand compared to other currencies? Because it does have this semi-haven status, yet things aren't looking too rosy here either. No, that's right. I mean, the recent data has continued to deteriorate. We've seen that again in terms of the retail sales numbers in the latest month. They were uh, very disappointing. And that really starts uh, a, a, a relatively poor section of data points for Q4. So you really need to look at Q2 to Q4 in, uh, in combination to try and get a better underlying picture of the UK economy. Clearly, Mr. King is trying to talk down the value of sterling. That's st certainly proven to be relatively successful, at least in the short term, against the dollar. I think we may well see uh, further weakness maybe back into the sort of 157 or three quarters area. But there is this question mark about whether sterling will weaken substantially because of the concerns in the euro, uh, euro region and the, the limitations in terms of topside in euro, uh, in euro sterling. Yeah, and what about euro dollar? Um, 127 seems to be a pretty key level for that. Do you think that that's going to be the key support going forward? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a, a move slightly down below there. So I think uh, getting down to maybe one, 126 and a half, maybe a little lo lower than that. So back towards the sort of 100-day moving average, I think, is, is a key in the short term. Uh, the dollar generally tends to underperform in the month of December as we start to see capital flows going back towards uh, domestic balance sheets. Uh, but I think in the near term, if we continue to see a weak uh, economic environment in the Eurozone, 
then I think that will continue to uh, underline some uh, pressure as, as far as the euro is concerned. I just wonder, generally speaking, where it where are investors putting their money at the moment? Because we've discussed that uh, commodity currencies come under pressure, safe havens aren't necessarily all strengthening, gold isn't exactly going through the roof, the S&P 500 has had a bad week, so where is investors' money going? Well, it is a, a very uh, a very tough environment for, for investors, and certainly from a currency perspective, it's very easy to find currencies to sell. Uh, it's much more difficult to find those that to buy. Now, of course, you know, we're, we're talking about the risk environment being uh, undermined by the US fiscal cliff story, but ultimately, if you're looking for relative safety, then you, there is still a degree of uh, residual uh, value in the US dollar. So we will probably continue to see the US dollar maintaining a, a reasonable bid, even though that's part of the source of the underlying problem. Jeremy Stretch, excellent as always, and the perfect way to end another week of London Direct. So have a great weekend. Goodbye for now.